ApoE, that's what you're mostly going to hear of when you hear about ApoE and its risk in Alzheimer's disease, is the gene that codes for apolipoprotein E. Apolipoprotein E is a protein that is found in a variety of lipoproteins, including some HDL and LDL subtypes. Okay, so ApoE, going back to the gene, has three primary variants. So every gene in our body has different variants in different people. And those variants are different from each other in that they have specific changes to the DNA, the nucleotides in the gene that determine the structure of that protein. So there are three primary variants of ApoE gene, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, or epsilon 4, or E2, E3, and E4. That's where the ApoE4 comes from. Okay, so that's a version of the ApoE gene. And again, remember, the ApoE gene codes for apolipoprotein E. So these different versions of the gene, E2, E3, E4, create slightly different versions of the protein. And of course, the protein, the protein is the machine that actually does the work in our bodies. So these are like slightly different versions of the apolipoprotein E machine. Okay, so E2, E3, E4 create different versions of the machine. And this is kind of an oversimplification, but it's not way off. You can kind of think of um, E2 as the premier version, the best version that works the best. E3 is the normal version that most people have. And E4 is the worst version, the version that doesn't quite doesn't quite work as well. That's, a again, an oversimplification, but, but probably good enough for now. Again, this is not a perfect analogy, but, but, but I think it works okay. So for those of you who aren't super familiar with genetics, kind of think of it like different quality of parts or motor oils for your gas-powered car. So ApoE2 would be like the really high quality premier motor oil that functions better under pretty much every driving condition you could imagine. E3 would be like the medium quality motor oil that it kind of gets the job done, but it's not as good as E2, doesn't last quite as long, maybe not quite as good under extreme driving conditions. And E4 would be like the really, really lowest budget motor oil you could possibly buy, doesn't last very long, doesn't work as well, and it especially becomes problematic under harsh driving conditions or, or particularly aggressive driving conditions, challenging environmental conditions, okay? So um, so that's a way to think about ApoE2, ApoE3, and ApoE4. Okay, so that's almost all you need now, um, except there's one more thing you have, to, you have to keep in mind. For most of the genes in our body, including ApoE, we actually have two copies of those genes, okay? We get one from our mother and one from our father, and that's what comes together to make us unique individuals. So for every gene, pretty much, uh, other than on the sex chromosomes in some cases, you have two copies, okay? So with, for ApoE, we all have two copies of ApoE, and you can have different versions of the E2, E3, and E4 alleles. So there are really six possibilities for each person. You could have two copies of the good version, E2, E2. You could have E2 and E3, so one good, one sort of medium, uh, you could have two copies of E3, that's E3, E3, that's the most common genotype for ApoE, that's the most common combination um, out there. You could have one E2 and one E4, so one very, very good version, one bad version. You could have E3, E4, one normal, one bad, and you can have two copies of E4, two, two of the lower quality uh, motor oil in this analogy, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So, ApoE. E gene codes for apolipoprotein E, which helps transport fat around the body. There are three common versions of the ApoE gene, which make slightly different versions of apolipoprotein E. Those are E2, E3, E4. E2 makes the best version of apolipoprotein E. E3 makes the normal version, and E4 makes the less functional version, okay? A little bit of an oversimplification, but pretty close. Now, if we look at those six categories, we can kind of put them in a table and summarize, like, what do we know about the different genotypes, the different variants, versions of those two alleles that different people have? And if we rank them, again, oversimplified from best to worst, 
E2, E2 is the best. That's got the best lipid metabolism, lowest risk for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so that t tends, to, tends to be associated with the best health outcomes. The second best is E2, E3. The most common version is E3, E3. Slightly less preferred would be E2, E4. So you've got one good copy and one of the bad copies. So a somewhat increased risk of Alzheimer's disease compared to E2, E3. Um, E3, E4, so that's the most common for people who have E4. You're going to be a carrier of one copy. You're going to be E3, E4 in the most common cases of, of carriers of E4. And you have an increased risk for cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's disease. Fortunately, in these people, lifestyle is really, really effective at reducing that risk. So if you live a very clean lifestyle, healthy diet, exercise, good sleep quality, avoid alcohol, you can pretty much mitigate that increased risk of Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease if you're an E3, E4. E4, E4 would be two copies of the worst allele. And again, here, the Alzheimer's risk goes up quite dramatically. Cardiovascular disease risk goes up quite dramatically, about 12 to 15 fold for Alzheimer's disease. Um, higher LDL, lower HDL, a lot of inflammation is pretty typical. Again here, the good news is lifestyle can have a big impact, but in most cases in an E4, E4 homozygote, lifestyle isn't gonna get you all the way back to the, the risk profile of a, an E3, E3 person. Um, okay, so those are sort of the possibilities that are out there. If you don't know your APOE genotype, I personally think it's a good idea to know. All of these are modifiable by lifestyle. Okay, so why should you care? Um, again, unfortunately, at least for now, you can't change your motor oil, right? You're born with it. But if you do know your APOE genotype, you can assess your relative risk of cardiovascular disease and particularly Alzheimer's disease and take preventative action. Again, for now, that preventative action is mostly related to lifestyle, but it's really even more important for people who have one or two copies of E4. And you might want to consider less proven things like rapamycin, um, particularly as the risk reward profile shifts towards a much potentially greater reward if rapamycin is protective when you get to E3, E4, and E4, E4. So that's kind of the, the, the risk analysis way of thinking about, you know, why would we particularly potentially recommend rapamycin for people who have one or two copies of the E4 allele because the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease is higher. So the potential benefits of rapamycin are greater in those individuals compared to say E2, E2 uh, carriers. <laughs>